Howdy, if you're freak out, it's Miss Kosh. I am back doing multiple choice questions. This is now unit two, um, and these are questions that were written by Mr. Passwater. So a big thank you to him. Once again, I may not do everything, um, but enough to, we'll just see what, what, what I get done, which ones I feel like doing. Um, if I do, I'm not gonna do too much that's repetitive. Um, and what else am I gonna say? And I haven't looked at these. And I have a bit of a headache. <laughs> so I think I slept funny or something because my neck is, anyway, the whole, anyway. Uh, I'm fine, it's fine, we're fine. So here we go, we're gonna jump right in and see what happens. Um, so on this first one, they're telling us they're graphing terms of a geometric sequence. Keep in mind a geometric sequence is where you have a common ratio. So you might say like g sub n is equal to g sub one times r to the n minus one is, is your, one of your standard forms. So it's what you're multiplying by. Um, so what do I see in this particular problem? I see that when, um, g, I see that g sub two is equal to one. I see that g sub three is equal to two. That's a g sub three is equal to two. Um, so what's my common ratio? Um, I multiplied, well, to go from, it looks like I may have one fourth, one half, one, two, four, and eight. Okay, it looks to me like we um, were multiplying by two. Our common ratio is two, r equals two. But then if I just say, um, well, I have an initial amount of one fourth. So is there a one fourth times, not one half, but a one, nope. Okay, hang on. We're, um, this is a, this is gonna decay, and so that's no good. One half times two to the n. Okay, so here's what I, here's how I like to write these. I like to do n minus one. And so in my world, I would have said the initial amount is one fourth is what that appears to be. Our common ratio is two to the n minus one. Well, that choice didn't come up, but if we plug in, oh, this, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is not the, this is the zero term. This is the first term. So the first term is one half. So do we have one half times two to the n? Um, you know what? This may have been right to begin with. Huh. Oh my, okay. This, this doesn't bode well, y'all. <laughs> I think I'm a little off today. Because uh, this, my equation, the way I did it, my initial amount at, at my first term um, is one half times the common ratio raised to the n minus one power. Um, so if, the, if I work from here, I'd have this, and then it's times two to the n times two to the negative one, which is one half, which gives me this one fourth times two, two to the n. Oh, this is still wrong. Okay, sorry. Do we have this choice? Um, two to the n minus one. Um, okay, let's see. If I plug in zero, I have, um, uh, if I plug in zero, I have two to the negative one, which is equal to um, one half, but it looks to me like this is one fourth. So I don't think that's right either. This one, if I plug in zero, I get, no? Okay, oh, they were, okay, this this is probably, it. this was a, a tricky one you had to kind of think through. Um, it wasn't written in the standard way that I would wanna see it. Okay, let's try. So when n equals zero, we should get one fourth. So I have four times two to the um, negative four. So this is saying, this is two squared times one over two to the fourth, which gives me one over two squared, which is one fourth. Okay, that's promising. Um, and then let's plug in another one. Let's plug in three. If I say four times two to the negative one, this is um, equal to four times one half, which is two. At three, we were equal to two. So this is the right answer, and that was annoying. <laughs> Maybe the better thing would have been to, to manipulate this and say this is two squared times two to the n minus four, which would be equal to two to the um, n minus two. Could I have gotten there from here? Maybe, maybe comparing those would have been better. Um, you know what, I wasn't gonna do this one because it felt too similar, but I just have to redeem myself because that was terrible. This is a decay, so my um, factors, oh, so it's not gonna be this because that's a growth factor. Since that's bigger than one, it's gonna grow. Um, and my initial, so if I plug in one here, I would get two thirds of, of nine which is not what I want. At, when I plug in one, I got nine, so that's no good. When I plug in one here, I get 
um, one minus one is zero, I get six um, times one. So when I, my first term on this one would be six, but my first term doo -doo 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 -doo, is nine. So this is no good. Um, four to the, oh, okay, what, this is just sneaky. If I plug in, let's see, let's plug in three. Three minus um, three is zero. Anything to the zero power is one. So my third term should be four. My third term has a value of four. So that's encouraging and the others were eliminated. So that's good. Let's check one more term. Um, let's plug in two. So when n equals two, I have four times two thirds, two minus three is negative one. So this would be equal to four times um, the reciprocal. So four times three halves, um, this, which is equal to six. So what did we, re we were doing the second term should be equal to six and it is. So there's that. Uh, once again, they weren't nice and pretty, but we can handle it. Okay. Um, oh, this one, when I see it oscillating like this, it tells me that my, um, my common ratio is negative. So I would eliminate these that are positive off the bat. And then I'm going to see when I plug in one, I have, um, uh, four, negative four, because it's negative one half times eight is negative four, but it was positive, so that's no good. So if I plug in one here, one minus one is zero, um, anything to the zero power is a positive one, so this is this is gonna be the correct one, because it gave me that positive four. Oh, good, I'm, <laughs> I'm on a roll. Um, this one, we have an X, so what would I do? I would say that my first, oh, here's my second term, so here's my zero term. Um, if I want to, I can say, this is geometric again, I can say that g of n is equal to g of z, g sub zero times r to the n. Um, and so what did I get? My common ratio, I seem to be going down by half. So this was my initial, my, my zero term is 10. This is one half to the, to the n. Is that an answer choice? Uh, no. Oh, because we stretched it. This was not right. <laughs> I went to, um, it had a, um, it had a, a horizontal stretch, which means that that's going to be over two. Okay, let's see. Let's plug in, let's check this one. Um, if I plug in zero, I get anything to the zero power is one, so I get 10. If I plug in zero, I get anything to the zero power is one times 10 is still 10. Plug in zero, I get negative two. So one half, so this becomes four, that's that's 20, that's no good. If I plug in zero here, anything to the zero power is one, this is five, that's no good. Okay, so now let's see what happens when I plug in the next value that I know is two. So when n equals two, then I have 10 times one half to the first power, two over two is one, um, so that's five, and that is correct. So that's encouraging. Let's see what happens when I plug in two here. I'm gonna have 10 times one half to the, can you see what I'm doing? Um, two times two is four. So no, this is gonna be, um, what is that? Two, four, eight, 16. This is 10 over 16, which reduces to not five. Um, so this is our correct answer. Okay. Uh, a large theater has rows of seats arranged in a way the number of seats in each consecutive rows forms an arithmetic. Arithmetic means we have a common difference. If the fourth row contains, so um, a sub four equals 30, and the eighth row, a sub eight equals 54, which of the following gives the number of seats in the 10th row? Uh, a few ways to think about this, but we could say, um, um, well, a sub eight would be equal to a sub four, plus I have to add the common difference four more times. Um, and then, so I know this is 54 is equal to 30 plus four D, subtract 24 is equal to 4d, d is equal to 6, then I could say, okay, a sub 10 is equal to a sub 8 plus that common difference two more times. Um, if you're thinking, what in the world just happened? Go back and watch my videos on sequences and series. Um, I know that I have them. Uh, you just have to go find them. So d was 6, um, so if it's 54 plus 2 times 6 is 12, so this is equal to 66, and that's an answer choice. Okay, um, oh, a sub n represents an arithmetic sequence where a sub 3, a sub 6, a sub 3 equals 22, a sub 6 equals 10. What's the value of a sub 12? Um, okay, I would do the same thing as what we just did. 
uh, my comma difference, or you could, or, okay, let me do it a different way and see which way you like better. Um, you could think of this as um, a linear, because it's arithmetic, it, it behaves like a linear function, and so you can think of slope. And so it's like having the point 6, 10, and the point uh, 3, 22. Now, I don't always do this because it's not exactly how we do sequences, but um, I have 22 minus 10 over, 22 minus 10 over 3 minus 6, and so this is a 12 over a negative 3, which is a negative 4. So my common difference is my slope is negative 4. So a sub 12 would be equal to a sub 6 plus the common difference six more times. So where were we? 10 plus 6 times negative 4. So that's negative 24 plus 10 is negative 14. Okay. Um, it looks like these two are the same. I just have more space to write on this one. Um, selected random values. What can we say about S sub n? Okay, so this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this has a common, we have a common difference between our, um, our terms of our sequence. And this is, we added 1, we added 2, we added 4, we added um, 8. Well, so notice I multiply, 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 multiply. So I'm, I have a common, um, a common ratio. Could be geometric, which is geometric. Because successive terms have a constant proportional change. Oh. They don't have a constant difference. A constant difference would be linear and not geometric. Okay, so that's no good. Um, I have not used this terminology. Could be geometric because successive terms have a constant proportional change. It's true. I would have used the term uh, they have a common ratio is what I would have said, but apparently there's other ways to say it. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, here's an arithmetic um, sequence where we have, um, we have B and C. So let's see, what do we, we have, um, they tell us it's arithmetic. Okay. So A sub, A sub seven would be equal to A sub five plus two times the common difference. And what do we know? A sub seven is 26 and A sub five is 32 plus the common difference twice. Subtract, I get negative six. I get a common difference of negative three. Okay. So then how do I find the first term? Um, well, a sub 5 is equal to a sub 1 plus 4 times the common difference. So we just said a sub 5 is 32. We don't know a sub 1, but this is 4 times negative 3. That's negative 12. Add that over there. It's 44. Okay, so, so this b value is equal to 44. We want to know the eighth term. Okay, oh, so what are we doing each time? We're doing the, the common difference is negative 3. So if I subtract... Um, three from here, I'm at 23. Notice, I couldn't, I mean, I could subtract three, four times from here to there. No, I need to add. I was moving backwards. I have to add three times four to get back this way, which I, which is correct. And then when I come this way, I can't just say minus three. I have to do, there's a six term that was missing, but these terms were consecutive terms of my, of my sequence. Okay, so 44 plus 23 is 67, which is a choice. Um, okay, which of the following is g of 3? Well, okay, so what would I do? It's geometric. So it's g sub 1 times r to the third. So what do I know? This is 24. This is 3. Oh, this is nice. Okay, that divides out r cubed is equal to 8, which means that r is equal to 2. And so um, this would be 12 right before that. Because if, you're at, if you have 12 and you multiply it by 2, you get to 24. Um, or another way. 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 2 is 24. Here's the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. We're looking for the third term. Okay. How long have I been talking? 13 minutes. Um, We just finished 2-1. I did everything. I wasn't going to do all of them. Oh, I won't do all of this page. Um, Come on back for the next video. I'm going to post this one, and we'll just keep on, keep on going. So um, like, subscribe, comment, all the things, and I'll see you later.